Hey mamas, welcome back to my channel. So today this video is going to be about safe sleep for babies. So first we're gonna just tackle this term, co-sleeping. So co-sleeping is when you sleep near or in close proximity to your baby. This can be in a bassinet, in a playpen, they have the little bassinet on top of it, that, you know what I mean? Portable crib, an actual crib, whatever you use, is gonna be near the baby, you're in the same room, and this is what the term co-sleeping means. It does not mean sleeping in the same bed as your baby. I know we want to, I know like, it's just natural instinct, and especially if you're breastfeeding, it's easier, it's more convenient to sleep right there next to your baby, but it is unsafe. And I'm not exaggerating, I'm being very serious right now. There's something called SIDS and that stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. So this is when a baby possibly, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to inform you. This is when a baby passes away before certain months of age. And when you bring your baby home from the hospital, you're gonna get like an urge or just natural want for your baby to sleep on a soft, pillow-like, comfortable, cozy mattress. And if you went crib shopping, bassinet shopping, you notice that the mattress is pretty firm, kind of hard, and it doesn't seem comfortable at all. So you might like put comforters on top of it. No, 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 okay? It's supposed to be hard, this is why. It's supposed to be firm, I should say, not hard per se. Your baby can suffer from suffocation with the mattress being too soft, or if it's like memory foam type of mattress, or if it's a water bed, or if they're sleeping on top of a pillow. Your baby is not at a stage where they can lift their head up if they can't breathe. So let's say your baby's sleeping on their tummy, not trying to scare you, just trying to you know explain it as best as I can. Let's say, God forbid, your baby's sleeping on their tummy, if they're on a very soft mattress or like a memory foam type mattress or anything that's not a firm bassinet mattress, they're sleeping on their tummy and let's say they move a little bit, this can immediately cause your baby to suffocate because they don't understand that they can lift up their head or turn their head to breathe. They don't know what to do. They just got here, okay? They just popped out of you. So we want to just take those risks out of there and make sure we're giving our babies the best chance to explore and be those be the new learners of the world okay we want to make sure we're not working them too hard before they're at that stage so i would say around four months that's usually when most babies can lift up their head if they're uncomfortable maybe that's when you can do like a softer bed but typically they say just use a crib mattress until one year old i just chose to do the bassinet because it's really small and right under that thin, thin mattress, it's like a really, a, a slab of wood basically, so it's pretty firm. I knew that, you know, he, his face wasn't gonna sink in or anything like that. Once you deliver your baby in the hospital, the doctor is gonna, or a nurse may mention to put your baby on their back to sleep. So this is kind of what started the Big SIDS campaign and what really reduced the risk of sudden infant death is putting your baby to sleep on their back. Some babies like to sleep on their tummy, they hate sleeping on their back, but if you can, try to get your baby to sleep on their back. This drastically reduces the number of cases. So if your baby does like to sleep on their tummy more, you might kind of wait till they fall asleep and then turn them over on the back. You just want your baby to sleep on their back. They have the they have their face exposed to the air and this is gonna be the perfect and most safe way to have your baby sleep. Later on, when your baby has more head control and they're doing a lot of tummy time and they're building all those strong muscles, then you can put your baby on their tummy to sleep as long as you're supervising them. So even when your baby's at four, five, six months, if they're sleeping on their tummy, make sure that you're awake or in the room. And if you're not in the room, you can't be in there because you have errands or a to-do list to complete. You just wanna put them on the back, the safer, the better, okay? So for the past nine months or so, your baby was in this tight, snuggly, cozy room with the perfect temperature. They didn't have to worry about controlling their body heat and it wasn't too spacious, they were nice and snug. When your baby's born and coming home, they kind of want to feel that feeling like we assume this is what comforts babies like just by research and trial and error they like to still feel snug until a certain point where they're supposed to be reaching and doing tummy time and all this great stuff right so when you do bring your baby home you don't want to use a lot of blankets and stuff like that to keep keep them warm if your baby is overheated like with a hat on a blanket 
two two pairs of clothes on and socks it's possible that they may get overheated and overheating is another cause of SIDS or related to SIDS we still don't know what exactly causes this but studies over time show that taking all of these precautions does reduce the chance of sudden infant death tremendously they have blanket sacks that you just zip your baby up in this cool amazing cozy little sleeping bag kind of thing they also have sleepers or you can just swaddle them and just wrap them up in that blanket like a little burrito and this is going to keep them so warm and the blanket is not free or loose right it's wrapped around them so you know god forbid anything happens it's not covering their face or their mouth or their nose but keeping the baby safe but you want to keep your crib or bassinet empty no blankets for now just do swaddling or just have them in a cozy really warm sleeper um, this is something very extra, but it's what I did just to make sure my baby's temperature was good all day I didn't you can't have your baby too hot or too cold but What I did was check his temperature often because I was crazy and I was also used to doing that at the NICU We had to do it like every three hours So I did that and I just make sure he was at a stable perfect temperature throughout the day and whenever he got too cold that's when I knew like, okay, I need to keep his socks on. You know, you kind of get to know your baby over time. So you want to keep your crib or bassinet empty. You don't want to use the bumpers. They're so cute. But you just want to have as little to no things there as possible because all of this reduces the chance of SIDS. So you don't want to have a bumper yet. You don't want to have toys there or a pillow or loose blankets. You just want to keep it with the mattress, your baby, and if they're swaddling, blanket is what you're using, just that, okay? The less, the better. When you bed share, this puts your baby at risk for suffocation, strangulation, and SIDS. Some people bed share and nothing has ever happened to their baby. Miracles happen and so like your baby can undergo some strangulation when let's say you have blinds there and the little cords or even your headboard or your footboard it has a crack there but for, between the mattress and the actual headboard they can get stuck in there god forbid but it's just so many things that can happen that we just want to prevent right eventually your baby can sleep in your bed okay eventually but right now while they're newborn you want to keep them on that firm mattress you also don't want to fall asleep with your baby on their chest if your baby is sleeping on your chest and you're awake that's probably okay but you don't want to fall asleep with your baby on your chest like both of you guys sleeping no it's possible god forbid the baby can roll out of your arms just because you know your muscles relax when you sleep it's not intentional it's just something that could happen and what we want to do is reduce these incidents as much as we can so when your baby falls asleep or if you're getting tired you want to place them in the bassinet or have your partner take over from there or your mom or whoever is helping you during this time and this thing is not a proven fact we're still researching on what causes SIDS but the numbers went down drastically when parents put their newborns in a bassinet or a crib one thing about newborns is that they love sleeping. They always sleep. They sleep in your belly a lot. They're sleeping when you're born. So until they're about two months old, your baby's gonna sleep like 17 hours a day. And there's 24 hours in a day. They're sleeping about 17 hours. So sometimes you might just look at them, you wanna play, but they're knocked out. They eat, sleep, eat, sleep. When you feed your baby, you wanna make sure you burp them and make sure that if there's any gas or any possible spit up, babies love spitting up. <laughs> You want to make sure you rip them and give them the chance to express all of that, all of the fluids or whatever they need to get out of them. You don't want them to possibly choke on their spit. You want to give them a chance to do that right after they eat and while they're still awake. When my baby was still a newborn. I did not compromise with burping him. I would always burp him. Even if he's a little sleepy, I'd make sure I burp him just because he did tend to spit up a lot. And um, yeah, I, I'd suggest that for, I'd recommend that for any other parent. Make sure. You burp your baby, okay? Let them get a chance to get all of that out before you put them back to sleep. You don't want to worry about sleep training or doing a sleep schedule at this time just because you want to do on-demand support for your child. They're new. This is a new environment. Um, typically, older generations are going to advise you other otherwise, but through like such so much of the knowledge we've gained and research we've done on this, 
it is best that you do the sleep training or sleep scheduling much later so right now at the newborn stage you want to really learn your baby learn their fussy cries learn their hungry cry learn their tired cry learn their painful cry this is the only way your baby can communicate with you so you know you want to really try to get to know their crying and you want to respond and reassure them that you can comfort them you can fix whatever is wrong and this is going to help them build a sh even stronger bond with you they're going to know i don't have to have a tantrum to get what I want from my mom or my dad. I'm gonna communicate with them, they're gonna respond, and eventually you'll know every single type of cry. So sleep training, or letting the baby cry it out, or doing scheduling, you wanna save that for later if you choose to do any of those. Because right now, it's a new environment for the baby. Their, com their world has completely changed and we just want to make this transition as easy as possible as we can. Um, my baby, when I was breastfeeding, cluster fed, so he'd wake up like every hour and a half almost just to feed and take like little amounts of milk and then he'll get too tired and he'll um, take a nap, wake up. So I barely got any sleep when I first brought my baby home because he was a cluster feeder, but typically babies would just wake up every two hours to nurse or to get their formula and then they'll take a nap because they just did a lot of work. Lastly, I want to leave you guys with my favorite final rule for safe sleep with your newborn is trusting your mommy or daddy instincts. You will know what works for your child, no matter what I say, no matter what doctors say, no matter what anyone around you says, trust your mommy instincts. They're given to you for a reason and you know what's best for your baby. So trust your decisions, trust your gut. If something doesn't work for you that I suggested or that the doctor suggested, just follow your heart and you know, and take full advantage of your special, unique, one-of-a-kind connection with your baby.